Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. They suggested I react to Muhammad Al Fatih. So, without wasting time, this by the way, this video is going to be in three parts because it's long. So, without wasting time, let's get into the video. The message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said as related by Imam Ahmed La suhta hanna al-qusbun taniyah Fala ni'ma al-amir amiruha Wa ni'ma al-jaysh Thalik al-jaysh The message of Allah said You will surely conquer Constantinople Its amir will be the most wonderful and the best of amirs And its army will be the most wonderful and the best of armies the Byzantine capital was Constantinople. For 1100 years, the Byzantines ruled Christendom. The longest empire, the man who brought them to their knees was Muhammad al fatih 800 years after he prophesied this, this was when Muhammad al fatih rahimahullah, conquered Constantinople. Constantinople for a thousand years, was the most beautiful city in Christendom. There was nothing like it in the world. Who were the Ottomans? 1258, Uthman, the leader of the Ottomans, was born. His father, Ortogal, always be at the forefront because Ortogal was unparalleled on the battlefield. It was from him in 1258 on the same year that Baghdad was sacked that he had a child called Usman Usman is the founder of the Dawlatul Uthmaniyah and also known as the Ottomans they say it started from a dream that Usman had a dream that he's sleeping and the heart of a very pious man is transferred into his heart and then from his stomach a tree sprouts out and the shade of this tree goes all over the world. He had the dream interpreted. They said that the dream is that your progeny will establish justice where people will live under this justice and prosperity and peace. The Prophet ﷺ was once in the house of Umm Haram. He falls asleep. He wakes up after a while and he's smiling. And Umm Haram radiallahu anha says, O Messenger of Allah, what's making you smile? May my mother and father be sacrificed for you. The Messenger of Allah said, I saw that a group of people from my Ummah and they're on these large ships, like kings sitting on thrones. So she said, O Messenger of Allah, make dua that I am from amongst them. He said, you will be from amongst them. Then he went to sleep again. And after a while, he wakes up and he's smiling again. And Umm Haram radiallahu anha asks him, O oh, Messenger of Allah, what's making you smile? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I saw a group of my people, they're sitting on these large ships like kings on thrones. She says, O oh, Messenger of Allah, make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make me from amongst them. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you will be from the first ones. Come the time of Abu Bakr, nothing happens. Come the time of Umar, nothing happens. Come the time of Uthman radiallahu anhum. Muawiyah now says, Uthman, give me permission to start the naval expedition. So Uthman radiallahu anhu allows him. They go to Cyprus. In this ship is no other than Umm Haram radiallahu anha with her husband, Ubadat ibn Samit radiallahu anhu. They reach Cyprus. Umm Haram is riding the horse. The horse is startled. Umm Haram falls off. Until today, the grave of Umm Haram anhu bears testimony to the prophecy of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But in the time of Muawiyah radiallahu anhu himself, Muawiyah now starts another expedition, and this expedition is to Constantinople, and every single person wanted to be in this expedition. You know why? Many Sahaba had become old. You know why? Because there were two possibilities of prophecy here. One was guaranteed and one was a possibility. 
the one which was a possibility is that you will surely one day conquer Constantinople. The Amir will be the best of Amir and the army will be the best of Amir. So this was possible if they conquered it. But there was another prophecy related by Imam Muslim in the Sahih that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the first army from my Ummah which attacks Constantinople, the city of the Caesar, Allah will forgive them all. And this is why every Sahabi wanted to be in this army. You had Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Zubair, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhum. But really the name that really stands out is Abu Ayyub al-Ansari radiallahu anhu. Abu Ayyub al-Ansari radiallahu anhu at this time was over 80 years old. He had the honor of hosting the greatest of creation sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Ayyub al-Ansari radiallahu anhu would live on the top floor. The Messenger of Allah would live on the bottom floor. 80 years old. You are the host of the Messenger of Allah. There's no need for you to go. You're 80 years old. He says the ayat in the Quran, Infiru khifafun wa thiqalan, won't allow me to sit at home. Allah says, go in the path of your Lord. May you be heavy or may you be light. He said, this verse in the Quran will not allow me to remain at home. Imagine this, from Medina all the way to Constantinople. The battle begins and he befalls unwell. It becomes unwell. He withdraws from the battle. Yazid was the general of this army. When he heard that he was unwell, he went to visit him. And he said, Sheikh, what can I do for you? He said, give my salam to the army and tell them that they must fight with vigor. And when I die, make sure that you bury me in the furthest land of the enemies. So I can say to Allah, Oh Allah, I went in your path living and I went in your path whilst I was dead. He passes away and they take him with a procession right to the outskirts of the walls of Constantinople. So Caesar is watching this. He sees this procession. So he sends a message to Yazid and he said, what's this? Yazid said that this is a companion of the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it was his desire to be buried as far as possible in the enemy lands. Caesar says, sends a message to Yazid. He says, obviously you're not as intelligent as your father. He said, when you leave, I will exude and I will feed it to the dogs. So Yazid replied, he said, I swear by the one that you disbelieve in. And I swear by the one due to whom he's buried here. If you do that, I will every Byzantine in our lands and I will every church in our lands. It had such a big impact on Caesar that Caesar put permanent guards around the grave of Abu Yubal Ansari radiallahu anhu. Western historians mention that when the Christians would have a drought, they would come to the grave of Abu Ayyubal Ansari and the Christians would make dua for barakah. Constantinople. What is Constantinople? Istanbul today, Napoleon once said, if the world was one country, its capital would have been Constantinople, Istanbul, because it bridges the east and the west. In 1559, when Queen Elizabeth I, in 1559, she sent an organ to Muhammad III. And when Thomas Dallum, who went to deliver the organ, he entered Constantinople, he says, it was like I entered into a different world. He said, I had never seen anything like it. Just from 1123 to 1453, which was the year that Muhammad uh, Fatih lay siege to it, it had been sieged 23 times. The Muslims since the time of the Sahaba until the time of Muhammad al Fatih had laid siege to it 11 times. In holiness, it was regarded as the second Jerusalem. As far as the walls were concerned, it was regarded as the most impregnable city on the face of this earth. 12 miles of wall, eight miles were water, four miles land. It was regarded as impossible to take. 
Let me move on to the man that I'm going to speak about today. Muhammad Al-Fatih. Who does Muhammad Al-Fatih come from? Muhammad Al-Fatih come from the Ottomans. Who were the Ottomans? See, when the Mongols came into Eastern Turkestan, half a million of the Turks migrated to West Turkestan. These were people who were homeless. Wallahi, if there was any group of people who became inheritors of the earth, it was the Ottomans. Homeless, destitute, running away from the Mongols. Who were the Mongols? The Mongols were those people who decimated the Muslim world. 1258 was the year that Baghdad was sacked. 1258 was the year which Uthman, the leader of the Ottomans, was born. 1258, his father, Ortogal, when he migrated, he saw two armies fighting, the Khwarjans and the Seljuks, the Shias and the Sunnis. So what he did is that he took the side of the, the Sunnis, the Seljuks. The Seljuks were so impressed by Ortogal's military brilliance, they gave him a certain piece of land. It was from him. In 1258, on the same year that Baghdad was sacked, that he had a child called Usman. Usman is the founder of the Dawlatul Uthmaniya and also known as the Ottomans. Usman was known for his justice. I mean, there are many narrations where Usman would judge between a Muslim and a non-Muslim and he would give judgment in the favor of a non-Muslim. And they would say, why do you do this? He said, because Allah commands us to fulfill the rights of other people. Let me briefly tell you who the Ottomans were. The Ottomans are the longest empire that the Muslim world has ever had. No other Muslim dynasty, no other Muslim empire, no other Muslim caliphate lasted as long as the Ottomans lasted. They ruled Iraq, they ruled Egypt, they ruled all of North Africa, all the way up to Tunisia. They ruled Sham. When I say Sham, that means all of the old Sham. The three harams, Mecca, Medina and Al-Quds was under the Ottomans. They were unparalleled. These were the flag bearers. When the Mamluks finished, when the Abbasids finished, when the Khwarizm finished, when the Muahideen finished, there were only one group of people who defended this Ummah for centuries and that was the Ottomans. Ajeeb, Allah says that we want to favor upon those who are taken weak in the earth and we make them the imma, the imams and we make them the warithin, the inheritors of the earth. So let me now move on to Muhammad al-Fatih. Muhammad al-Fatih rahmatullah alayhi was the seventh sultan out of the Ottomans. His father was Murad the second. And his father was very, honestly, you know, whenever I've studied the lives of every single Muslim leader, Wallahi, there's two characteristics I've seen in every single one. The first was tarbiya. The parents were concerned about nurturing their child. They put an effort in nurturing their child. You know, they say about him that he was a son of a sultan. He wouldn't listen to his teachers. And Murad the Thani was so concerned that he said, find me a teacher who can my child. So they found a man called Imam Qawrani. Imam Qawrani was Kurdish. He was known as the Imam Abu Hanifa of his time. And being the son of the Sultan, he laughed in the face of Imam Qawrani. Imam Qawrani was old style. He took out the stick and he gave him a... They say before this, he could barely read the Quran by the age of eight. Muhammad al-Fatih became a Hafiz al-Quran. They say Imam Qurani instilled in him the love for reading and writing. Muhammad al-Fatih could speak up to eight languages. We can't speak English. If there's something that I really, really love is anything that has to do with history. And this, I, I always, I've always found the Ottoman Empire very, very interesting and to get more insight it's just something that really really excites me otherwise i'm really enjoying this and the information that i'm getting from this this is knowledge that should be shared